Good day, my lovely listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. Tune in every week to explore inspiring stories and insightful information that dive headfirst into the world of autism and mental health. With all those tantalizing tongue twisters out of the way, let's get into the show. Good day to you all and welcome back to the 40 Auti Podcast, the Autism and Mental Health Podcast. Season two, of course, the big two. I was going to come up with something witty to say there, but anyways, we're on with it. We're all we're all set up. We're all golden, peachy keen. Um, and it is a pretty mild day here in the UK today. Uh, just just giving you your 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 local um, weather forecast. And we currently have some lovely avians um, scouring about in the the roof of our house. They, they they seem to love to nest in our roof when it comes to around springtime. So I've got to put up with a lot of sensory noise that I, I don't want, but they are beautiful things. So today we are going to be talking about autism, of course. Again, we're going to be talking about special needs education, SEN schools versus mainstream schools. The representative of the the mainstream schools will be myself, um, particularly around secondary school. And Mason is going to talk about what it's what it was like for him to to grow up in secondary school education in a in a special needs school, an SEN school. After my incredibly painful and long introduction, Mason, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good. I, I'm doing good. Um... I've, I'm doing. I'm doing well. F- 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 thank you for asking me to to come on. Um, no, of, of course. Yeah. It's um, from my end of things. It's, it seems to be that you are, you know, you you really getting into the the podcasting scene, like um, producing mm-hmm. lots and lots of lots of podcasts, which I could not hope to do because I am incredibly disorganized. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I try. I try. To, it keeps me busy. Like. So, mm. like um i try to do multiple a week yeah, mm. like um i try to do as many as i can and i do I do a schedule like in time so there's episodes going out each week so it yeah. that, it keeps me occupied and i um i probably ramble myself <laughs> <laughs> it's okay where it's a it's a rambling podcast uh, yeah. rambling is very welcome here um, or monologuing, as some people like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, t- tell us a little bit about your podcast, the kind of stuff that you do, the kind of things that you talk about with your guests. Um, let us in on on the secret. Okay. Well, um, for those who, who don't know what my podcast is, it's called um, Crying and Autism Awareness Advocate, and we um, we vary episodes. Um, about the different topics um lately we, we've been doing autism based episodes for awareness month um which has the time we're recording this it is awareness month so um episodes yep. going out every day um it hasn't it's the first time every it's day yeah every day every oh, day this month good lord um, and that's the first time i've ever done anything like that on the podcast um <laughs> <laughs> it's that it sounds like hell I, I don't yeah. I, I don't know how you do that, Mason. Um, the idea actually came up to me at the end of, I think it was February. Yeah, the end yeah. of February, the idea came to mind, and I thought I've got to be really I've got to be really organised to do this because I've got a whole <laughs> month to get about lots of episodes in, and then when I ask a person and then they kind of cancel, uh, I, I get worried because I, I'm thinking that episode's going to lead yeah. up to another one. Um, especially if you're doing it if you're doing it daily you must be like constantly emailing and dming and yeah and, try, and trying to organize organize people i i know that it's yeah. quite it can be quite difficult sometimes especially when um both the podcast host and the guest are both autistic and mm. struggle struggle with executive functioning and yeah. uh, anxiety and stuff so some sometimes it can be quite quite rough to try and like nail down an interview when 
you know, make sure everybody's in a good headspace before it. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I make it as comfortable as I can for people. Uh, mm-hmm. so some people want questions in advance. Some people don't. Um, like, with mine, it's more like a, a coffee cut chat or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what we like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but yeah, like uh, other than that, um, like actually, I updated the logo start of this year. It had the added on was mental health kind of added on to it mm-hmm. and chronic illnesses because so, so speaking about Crohn's and what what I have as well as well as autism uh, mm-hmm. kind of talked to other people about different cr- chronic illnesses as well um, yeah and it is interesting because people that have come on have autism so sometimes talk about like um proper problems with, with, with like like, like like in in the body and stuff so it it yeah. kind of it's quite a, a relevant show kind of going stuff, off the hobbies. stuff like um yeah stuff like interoception sensory processing yeah i can i can see why and it must be i know there's a high correlation between autism and, and ibs irritable bowel syndrome a lot of things related to diet but i haven't i haven't necessarily read anything about crohn's and autism because i imagine that well i mean considering it's a disease i can imagine that it, it causes quite a lot of issues for, for you sort of living living day to day and sort of trying trying to manage that alongside mental health, you know the the difficulties of being autistic, that kind of thing. It sounds like it could be as with, as with many disorders, you know, cumulative, um, sort of on on your mental health in general. Yeah, I've I've met probably two. I've had Crohn's and autism, mm-hmm. and it's quite rare for that. And like IBD and actually IBS get even in the IB in the Crohn's communities and mm. and stuff people kind of get them mixed up um but because they they have they got their similarities but they are different things um mm. well, like, what one is like just the inflammation and one is am i right in thinking Crohn's is the the autoimmune disease where where your yeah. immune system attacks your digestive system is that yeah that, that, that explains Crohn's quite well like um like flare ups and like Mm. Like um, it's like you're taking yourself all red inside, and in a way, why autism and Crohn's um between them because there's there's a stigma between the two, where about um like how people see you and like 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 they say you don't look like you have Crohn's, you don't look like you have you're autistic. You get mm. that a lot in your autism community as well. So um, I know what you mean. So yeah, although they're one's in illness and one's not, they are. There are two topics why I created the podcast to um, help me, mm. help with my mental health, I think. That has helped mm. my mental health because having a, a condition that damages my immune system and kind of having more time to do that, it kind of helps speak to different people and meeting new people. You, you learn stuff as well, don't you? It's um, yeah. it's, it's sometimes very, very eye-opening because you have, I think, to, to do with autism, a lot of the scientific literature doesn't really – give you a, a good representation of what autism is because because for example with autism the the diagnostic criteria are so um they're based on external sort of behaviors there's a lot of sort of gray areas that that research and science hasn't really explored so sometimes like talking to people gives you you know, getting that experiential knowledge often does a lot for, you know, um, your life and, and sort of um, things for you. Shall we move on to the main questions? Yeah. So the questions around special needs education versus mainstream. It's not a battle. We're, we're not trying to debate which one's best. We're just uh, just giving giving our own personal experiences from different different outlooks on education. Um, so the thing that I really want to ask is what was your mainstream school experience like before you switched to SEN education? Like, did you have any difficulties or additional needs that weren't being met or or were met? Yeah. Well, um, well, my, my mainstream school, uh, my mainstream school, um, 
like, situation before I actually moved um, is, is a good question because I suppose I haven't really spoken about that much to different people who have mm. pointed out different things about how bad it was. But yeah, it's a, a really good question. Is that um, parents, parents and or teachers um, or, or friends? Like it was, it wasn't nice at all because teachers didn't understand um possibly try to make say things to like parents to make them happy and stuff because uh yeah. and yeah like i have I was given work that wasn't kind of my levels and stuff um and yeah like me my autism i wasn't confident really um mm. definitely wasn't confident and um I wasn't making many friends. Um, I took sarcasm quite literally back then. Um, yeah. Um, of course I, you did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I took sarcasm <laughs> quite literally. So things that people were saying to me, I don't know if they were my friend. Yeah. Or they were being serious or mm, mm. if they were being serious in a jokey way. It's very hard. And like, that's that's, I, that's um, a really interesting mm. one. That's the That's the kind of... Um, the 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 thoughts about oh, you know, if if you can't really distinguish exactly what what someone's trying to say and in what way and and the context and stuff, then it could be that people are making fun of you or um, bullying you or you know, it's 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 a very sort of ambiguous realm sort of communication at that age. Definitely, definitely, like um. Would you like me to talk to you through a couple of difficult experiences um, where shows that teachers didn't understand at, at mentoring? Of course, um, that would be you know obviously if it's it's something that you're you're comfortable and, and happy speaking about. Yeah. So um, w- w- one afternoon, just before lunchtime, I um, said uh, after lunch go out outside the library. Um, mm and stuff so me and a couple of people did it um and we would stand up about 15 minutes and we stay there and we're thinking why no one else turned up like 15 minutes and no one this was here um and then i thought just to walk back just to see if anyone's in there like what i like, why are we getting made to wait up here if no one's turned up so mm. walk back and then the first thing the teacher says is uh where have you been? You're late. Um, and then I'm thinking to myself, you told us to go to the library. Um, mm. And that wasn't, there was miscommunication there. Mm. Um, and bearing in mind, this class, or this specific class is in the mainstream school, the area where some more people need help, like additional needs and stuff. So, mm. um, and then the teacher said that you've got a detention and, I don't normally get detentions. I normally do everything right. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I like to, I like to do everything as best as I can, and yeah. And then I wasn't really happy about that having a detention. And the following day, had a year actually came in, talked to all of us who was outside the library, um, and his tone of voice wasn't very nice. Um, no. He said. Uh, why were you all late to lesson? And me, my anxiety went right up the way you're speaking and everything. And what what he's what, what I said, I just said what I thought was right. There's obviously, there's obviously miscommunication. It's almost like my brain was on fire at this point because I didn't want to. I didn't like the way he was speaking. And Mason yeah. now, Mason how he is now, would say something. Yeah. <laughs> um, what the hell are you doing? Like, you told you yeah. told me to do this. Why, yeah. why why are you expecting me to do something else if mm. if you told me to do that? Yeah, I don't understand why the head of year did get involved, considering it was a teacher thing. But and, uh, luckily, but what about the the other yeah. students? The the students who turned up at the 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 lesson and 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 sort of didn't listen to the the library instruction. How really how did they bizarre. get back? Um, I think we were all in the same book. Like, I think we all got attention, and the head of you ended up saying, "You're let off this time," and and stuff. And then 
yeah, it wasn't very nice about that. Mm. And then that's just one incident. Another incident, uh, well, not so an incident, something really silly that I thought, um, because, you know, in like mainstream school, you wear these ties, don't you? Mm. Um, and everything. Uh, I struggled to put them on. I could never do it. Like, I would ask all the time for help to put one so of the, the ties on. The the fine fine motor skill difficulties. Yeah. 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 And I always asked uh, Drama Room, for example, and he said that he couldn't do it. Like, if he couldn't do it, um, I, I was kind of shocked because me thinking then, is he actually not wanting to do it? Or he, but one thing he said, he said he's not allowed to do it. That was really got to me. He's not allowed to do it, and that that didn't make sense. And <laughs> um, that's your job: help, help people yeah. do things that they struggle mm. with. And um, and it come to the point where people were just watching me struggle. Not just that particular teacher; other teachers were asking me. And then I got to the point where I was just running out of the school gates, mm. quickly get in the car, uh, go home, and say say to my dad, "Quickly drive, drive, drive." because I was that anxious and that really nervous about those kind of things mm. um, that, yeah, that I knew that they were going to watch me struggle, like, um, and I said I can't do it. and That's awful. And, like, other situations about getting lost and stuff in, in the in the actual school and yeah. um, a teacher that I particularly uh, – I'll get onto the P bit in a minute, which um, – which many people, I don't know if anyone's experienced the same thing, but that kind of leads back into sarcasm a little bit. One time I had, I got, I was struggling and I wasn't asking anyone. A teacher came up to me, which is, was a kind of PE teacher, said, uh, Wait, why are you not in lesson? I said, I'm lost. He said, I got, you got your diary, um, like, like map. Um, mm. And I could tell from his body language he didn't want to be here. He didn't want to help me. And I said, if you've got someone to better be, do it. And then, and then he asked me what classroom I was going to. And, of course, I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what classroom. I don't know where it is. And then he kind of left that there. Were you were you quite sort of high anxiety, um, you know, sort of border meltdown kind of yeah. state? Yeah, I had quite a lot of meltdowns, and um, especially with lockers and, and mm. stuff like that and, like, situations in the PE room they would give you a certain time limit to get change yeah and then oh and <laughs> and which I didn't like um and what, what you said it they said if you're not ready in a minute it, it's weird you know because as soon as you get in the PE room they say you've got one minute to get ready okay yeah. <laughs> um well, I don't think anyone can get ready in one minute no. <laughs> but the thing that really raised my anxiety was said if if you have 30 seconds. If you don't, you're going to get locked in. Oh my they God. said they said you'll get locked in, and that. And obviously, so you took, took that yeah. took that on the chin yeah. and said that that's literally what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did, and like I didn't like that, and like you run out, run out with your pants on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did, I did, I did do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, honestly, like, like. All, all of the points that you've made are kind of, you know, they're, they're alluding to different traits of of being autistic. You know, you've got the fine motor stuff around around the ties. Um, you've got the 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 communication choices. You know, Pro- probably most most sane people would be able to gather that if you've got um, a student who struggles with anxiety probably not the best thing to do is to put them in a spot in front of everybody and and get get them to be the center of attention um just in general for for anyone with anxiety and then then there's also sort of the the literal thinking kind of aspect of it taking taking people by the word you know that that first example that i mean to to me that mostly screams incompetent teacher um to give instructions and then not not take ownership of that and you know not not believe you it's it's kind of it's weird isn't it teachers have this um you have to 
sort of put on a different persona just like you would with with podcasts and YouTube videos. And sometimes the persona that you put on as a teacher, that, that persona for some people is, is quite ruthless. <laughs> you know, uh, you got one minute to do this. It's like, don't do that or you get an attention detention immediately. Any any sniffles or or anything like that, and you're you're off to the clangor, you know. <laughs> and some some teachers are, are are like that. And I th- I, th- I think sort of the 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 main if if I'd be all right to say that you know the main thing is is that they they didn't understand or, or listen to you about about certain things. I actually had when I was there, which I've said before. Um, I'd be really intrigued to go back to there to see is there anything different mm. like, uh, happening. And they had the isolation unit there, so some people who get like had this strike sheet. I think they did, and if you get the most, you go in this isolation unit, which can be really, I suppose, isolating, of course, but really bad on people's mental health going on there. So, so yeah, like my experience. Nah, this was only a year, by the way. This was only one year, <laughs> yeah. and I, I mentioned all, all these different things that happened, and um, the struggling yeah, to fit in, the yeah. the le- the loneliness aspects, the anxiety, the the yeah. not being understood by by teachers and other people. It sounds it sounds sounds really awful. I I have a similar I have a similar experience with PE. This is why I chuckled. Um, there was those, this one time where I got a detention that actually went on my my record. It was because I take a long time to get dressed, to to shower, to clean, to cook, to to do to do any of that those those kind of tasks. It takes me a long time to do them, and it requires a lot of mental energy. And um, uh, there was a, a textiles DT lesson. Don't can't remember what DT stands for. Design technology, something, something oh, like that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Well, um, this, so this teacher was was, yeah, they, they were an okay teacher. They weren't the best. They were a bit sort of laissez faire kind of attitude to things. And um, I was late one lesson after after PE because I struggle in the communal changing rooms getting changed in particular. So it used to take me a long time and it was only after everybody had left or, you know, there's a few people left in, in that, that changing room that I, I actually, you know, started to pull myself together and, and get changed and stuff. And I remember the, the absolute hellfire that I received just for being late to a textiles lesson and they hadn't even done anything. They were just chatting. They were just like, there was, there was no, I didn't miss out on any part of my education for that, but uh, it, you know, you, yeah. you talking about your experiences does does kind of um, help me sort of remember this. This was kind of the the early early stages of secondary school for me. Could have been the same, yeah. But um, I mean, as as far as mainstream ex- experiences for me, um, there's a whole list of them. Like, I don't think anybody's under the guise that secondary school is a is a good place for autistic people, even main, mainstream schools. Um, yeah. There's there's so much potential for for bullying, for isolation, for public humiliation, for perhaps not not having the right learning style to to be engaged with the classroom. Um, the anxiety, the mental health, the, the the sensory aspects of being in a wide open corridor being in wide open corridors in a in a big school like thinking about it just kind of makes my skin crawl a bit now because yeah that environment is um very very overwhelming it is and like actually another situation which is really anxiety and everything like even lunchtime mm. um but because there'll be lots of people in queues and everything queuing for their lunch and I remember I had this like thumb pass or something like that that you could order your lunch off. Um, oh. It was like automatically, and yeah. it can, and the money goes into your account. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah, from, yeah. From the school and everything, and I always got anxious about that because I'm not best with money and maths really. Mm. 
that's probably one of the things I do struggle with. And going and against yeah. the autism stereotypes, Mason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that um, the cues, and I don't like crowds and, and it, like that. I don't like being close contact, which is why I loved social distance when it was uh, mm. uh, over here. Um, Beautiful but, social distancing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even I'll still do it. <laughs> yeah, all the time. <laughs> oh. I, I was very depressed the day that I that I went out for a walk and people didn't move at least two meters away from me while I was walking. Those were the days. But no, they, yeah, I, I'd agree with you. I think, you know, a lot of the experiences that you shared are very similar to um, to what I've experienced with, with, with mainstream sec- secondary schools, I would say. It's, it's a bit more... Um, it's a bit different for, for primary school because I was a very sort of bubbly, happy-go-lucky kind of kid. Like I found everything funny and I was always laughing at everything and <laughs> annoying the teachers and annoying my peers. And um, I, had, I had a good friend who was also called Tom um, who we used to like mess around and laugh and giggle to ourselves about random stuff. And it was it was only it was only at the age of about ten, which I think was just kind of um, exit, exiting the the primary school kind of age, um, going into high school or, or secondary school, and you know at, at that age I wasn't really very aware of things. I struggled in new situations, like if I was going to a new club, or going to a party, or or doing something out of out of my routine. Oh, yeah. Um, I definitely struggled with those sensory aspects um, at school. One one of the funny things about primary school for me, mentoring primary school, was that I could read before I went to primary school, like really well. I could do maths. As soon as I went to primary school, didn't do any of it. Did poorly on all of the tests. Didn't didn't pay attention to classes. Didn't do anything like that. So. Primary school actually had a really negative impact on my learning. <laughs> um, the the one the one saving grace for me was um, a card game called Yu Gi Oh. And if 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 you know about Yu Gi Oh, the uh, you have like different effects for it, for each of the the cards that you can have, and um, you have to read them and you have to understand them and you have to read the rules and you have to do calculations based on how many attack and defense points. You have it was it was a very simplistic game when I was that age. It's it's a lot more complex than that now, but that was what got me back into education. Just a card game. Um, <laughs> I loved a lot. My special interest. I had a lot of instances where I didn't get on with other other kids. Um, they they tended to use me as a bit of a a fool, you know, the village fool, because I was so gullible and energetic and happy and and all that kind of stuff and i took took people for the word for it and uh, they got me to to do a lot of things um in front of people at parties or in front of schools or in front of the the general public um that were not good um lots of expletives basically lots of rude words uh to shout out and call people which i didn't know anything about um at that, at that age but I got punished for it quite quite badly on a couple of occasions. So I, th- I think you know, in, in general, it was it wasn't it wasn't too bad of an experience for me. Mainstream primary. Um, I don't know what mainstream prime SEN schools primary school age SEN primary schools would be like. <laughs> did you do you have much much experience in an SEN primary school, or did they kind of just like merge primary and secondary together? Um, I, 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 I went, like, I started off, like, from young to mm. about, I think it's year six, I think last year in primary, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then, no, I, I transferred to mainstream mm. for that year, but my primary school experience wasn't, I didn't really enjoy it already, because no. for some reason no one liked me, and I don't know why, and I probably had that one friend that, wasn't really my friend and I thought they were, but they wasn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, I get that. And yeah, uh, like, like 
when you spoke about Yu-Gi-Oh, it kind of reminded me because I remember in mainstream, everyone was collecting Yu-Gi-Oh, getting Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and <laughs> I kind of started. Blue eyes, to, white dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I summon I, Exodia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got, I started collecting them to fit in, I suppose. And, oh, you and, did. Uh, yeah, and I, I collected them. I. I got asked to go to this place mm. in town where they actually play the game and, and stuff. So Yeah, like a like a games club kind of thing. Yeah. 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 And I, I did that I did that with it. match attack cards, the the football cards, because I wasn't interested in football. Um never really have been. But I, I collected the cards simply for the reason that they were shiny. Um and I like the look of them. <laughs> I, I had this Alan Shearer card that I, I got from a, a card pack and I was like, oh my God, it's a shiny Alan Shearer. I was like, everyone, everyone wanted it off me and I was like, no, no, it's mine. It's all shiny and nice. You can have all these boring card, card, um, yeah, colored I, cards. <laughs> I remember that in primary school. It was all about matter check. It wasn't like people say, uh, like, you dare open your book in because your face was going to nick one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was either cards or stickers or weird yeah. miniatures that you collect or there was this this one way you like wound up. It was like kind of like a mini Beyblade that you just kind of wound onto it on, onto like a spring loaded thing and then press the top in it. I I used to love doing that, like collecting like, and yeah, like there'd be there's a World Cup this year, so no doubt there'd be a sticker book for that. <laughs> But it's, it, I think I feel like it's an all-inclusive thing because the only prerequisite for interacting with other people is to talk about the thing that you're doing. And I, I found those social interactions a lot easier. And you, you touched a little bit on your experience sort of transferring from mainstream to special schools. What I want to ask is, why did it happen? Well, I mean, I, I, can, I can imagine why. <laughs> But why why did it happen, and and what was your your experience of that transition? I was like, because every day after mainstream, after school at uh, mainstream school, it was I get asked, "Have I had a good day?" Um, <laughs> and of course, I'd say no. <laughs> there might be one good day, maybe I've had a really good day. I've done really good stuff. Yeah. But it was rare that happened. Like, I, I enjoyed, I, I did at mainstream, I loved some of the teachers, like the maths teachers. Um, we left that day the same day. Mm. Me and this maths teacher, we got on. They said, uh, I'm leaving. I was like, oh, so am I. <laughs> but, <laughs> Going to better places. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, I'd love to, I can't, I actually remember his name and it'd be nice to, I suppose, me or, or, or get in contact again or something. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that that transition it was tough because going to a special school is very limited on spaces, mm. yeah, um, and it's very hard because you need a personal statement, you need EHCP, you need all that kind of stuff. Educational health yeah. healthcare plan. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And I looked at multiple schools, and there was one that stood out for me. Yeah, it, it, it stood out for me. I I went there. Had a look, look, look round, and it, it was good. It was good, and had an induction day, and yeah, it was really good. And beginning after Christmas time, in year eight, it would have been yeah, just mm. after Christmas, year eight, I go there. Had that interaction. How, like, how how did you find the interaction between um your, yourself and other other students and yourself and the teachers? I think, firstly, it was really hard because I didn't know anyone. I was mm. like the new kid, so um, it was really hard. People I thought, didn't really talk to me, and then then there was one person that was a bit mean and, and stuff, so I thought, is this any different? Um, so that process, it was really hard to start with. And then... I suppose it was, it's kind of a bit yeah. lot more, more unknown at this point. You know, you, yeah. you go in and you're you're in a new environment, new people, new new teachers, new students, new focus. Yeah. I actually the school wasn't actually it moved. The mm -hmm. school moved to another place, 
and which I was getting settled in this one, and then the actual school to build a new one, and then get oh used dear. to that one. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know what what kind of CP human was able to to pull that off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In a, in a special needs school. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good school, and um, yeah, my my experience was very good. I kind of I made quite a lot of friends as well, and that, that was good making friends there and hmm. and stuff. And I had a football court and stuff. Had club you can go to, football tournaments. No, also rush. Although they tell you that you should be in PE, but th- th- it's not as much rush that hmm. it was before. Um, I mean, and, from from, yeah. from from my experience looking at looking at special needs schools and fr- from looking at special needs schools from the teacher standpoint of me, me going, going in and being a, a teaching assistant. Um, it does seem that like a lot of the education and, and growth that happens tends to be a lot less, less spiky, like uh, in mainstream, it's all about the the results and the grades and not misbehaving and just kind of getting on with stuff and getting marks and, that that kind of thing, and sort of attending lessons. Whereas special needs schools tend to be a lot, you know, because you have stuff like the educational healthcare plan, which yeah. focuses on stuff outside of educational performance, like things to do with your functioning and the things that you find hard, um, ta- tailoring the things that perhaps you're good at, you know, and so, sort of molding molding lessons around things that you like a bit more. Is that something something that you've you experienced at in in an SEN school? Like, what what are the positive differences that that you saw when comparing your SEN experience to your mainstream? I think what was good was how the teachers were, how they were supportive and and stuff that which I didn't experience in in mainstream. Like, oh. it may be some help, but not like every few seconds, maybe a teacher checking up, so I'm doing all right and, and stuff like that. Mm. Um, Being so, attentive to to things yeah. that you might find hard. Yeah, and sometimes I would struggle, and even in even special in, in the special school, I would hide that everyone else was doing all right in the class, and I wouldn't also say I needed that help. Um, so my confidence wasn't still wasn't high. But mm. as the years went by in that in special school, it got really good. So it was it was very good, and yeah, uh, I am more confident than I used to be, and I think that can good. happen to people as they grow up. Mm. Well, I, I mean, from what from my standpoint, what I'm hearing is that the the things that really made a big big impact for you and and your experience was the the little things the you know consideration of your needs the things that you find hard offering offering light bits of support when you need it you know asking if you're okay <laughs> god what a bizarre concept in a mainstream school unless you're bawling your eyes out or screaming no. your house down <laughs> yeah yeah you, 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 yeah you don't get asked do you no like um they have more better things to focus about um like getting the work done they want to go home more or less the teachers do mm. oh i've got a class today but the teachers at main street are like, special enjoy it they do and like they enjoy like i enjoyed the getting having more friends people looking up, up on me as the years went by um mm. which i haven't really experienced before before that and that must nice have been a, a really yeah really great feeling it's um yeah, I, d- I don't know. It's it's really hard for me to imagine. I think w- when I was in primary school or that that kind of age, my my mum tended to um, sort of link up with other parents who had autistic children, um, just for me to 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 make friends with someone who was autistic as well, and um, that worked out really well uh, in in a lot of cases. It was always the the parents that were the issue. Um, I got on quite well with other autistic people. You know, it's 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 bizarre for me to think of 
a situation where I had autistic friends at a mainstream school. I imagine it would have made things a lot easier. I think what could, what would have made it even better is if people just had a baseline understanding of what autism is <laughs> yeah. and uh, the type the type of things that we struggle with and and that kind of thing. It would it would, it would give a lot more of a, a good framework for for sort of identifying things for yourself, things that you find hard and feeling comfortable expressing the things that you're finding hard to teachers and actually getting a response from that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I had teachers definitely in mainstream that were like that, but there were few and far between. There wasn't a lot of them who really sort of understood me and who I am and, you know, what I can do if I'm given the right environment. You know, those those teachers were often my, my safe haven you know, in a lot of cases. You know, the, the rest of the school day, even lunch times and breaks were always fraught with the possibility of being picked on or, you know, all the noise and the sensory stuff. So really the only times that I felt comfortable in secondary school, mainstream, uh, was in lessons with teachers that I liked or in the library playing games on the computer <laughs> <laughs> um i um well i did make one friend in mainstream hmm. um and it was a similar boat to me not me making the new friends and stuff and i left or i left him felt bad because he was the only friend and he was going to struggle hmm. um so i got to a special school like a few years later he actually joins, like helping to get him in there, and that was good. Like it's good, he's good to be there and everything. So yeah, that one friend, I still speak to him now. <laughs> good. Um, but we always keep in contact. Like um, it's good to hear. Um, That's very rare these days. What I found, yeah, you know, keep, keep keeping friends for that long. Like no, no matter about relationships and dating and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> like keeping a friends. That's that's um, yeah, right. Like, I like, I don't know about you, but I like friends that, who don't get funny about if you don't message them every day and like oh, talk yeah. one month to another and <laughs> like you just talked yesterday or something. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's always my best friends, the ones that I don't talk to. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> that's it, is it? <laughs> well, it's, it's that I know that they, they, they don't think it's because I don't want to talk to them. It's just because... You know, I I spend each day of my waking hours at work sending emails to people, communicating, having meetings, and then I come off from my job, and I have my social media stuff to do. I've got to message people, I've got to organize things, and go to events, and plan, and and you know, all of that. No, no matter whether you're autistic or not, it's it's quite overwhelming. Um, socially, I would say. I'd I'd say that it's probably a lot more difficult when you're autistic and you have more of an introverted inclination. Um, you know, that that having to constantly water and maintain multiple different relationships that you have or you know, it's it's exhausting. Um it can be really exhausting and, and sometimes all all you need is a person that says, Hey, don't worry about it. We'll talk when we talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still have some good friends that from social school that I still be, speak to. Of course I've left mm. I've left that now and um I did actually have a college um attached to the special school. Yeah. Um and I went there and then I got a good my confidence to go to a mainstream college. Mm -hmm. Um which no, so you went up. to a, you went to a mainstream college after yeah yeah That's after the special schools college because that it was attached it was yeah um a different place but and people teachers from the school would work so it was, you know the people and stuff mm. but they didn't really have I suppose it was just to see the experience and they didn't really have anything like courses that I was interested in because it was new yeah. and everything um sure. I did a catering course which. I didn't enjoy it really. Cause, um, <laughs> I can't imagine why 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 you didn't enjoy it. <laughs> no, I didn't really cook much. To be fair, 
like I remember once um, because the caring teacher was an N mm. and it was World IBD Day and um, yeah, in fact, actually bowel, bowel disease day and for for people with Crohn's and, and, and different things. We made cakes uh, with a teacher. We, we, we went to the kitchen, baked cakes and sold them in aid for um, charity. Um mm-hmm. Which was which was good, and I, I asked him before, and he I don't think he agreed. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it, I did presentations. I've done presentations as well, and and different things that got me out of my comfort zone. So I've enjoyed that. But from my experience, to go to that special um, that mainstream day because of I, think I was there a year, good first year, but the second year COVID happened, so I kind of uh... had to move away from that kind of setting because mm. everything else understanding like if the, if the government says you've got to go in you've got to go in so um they don't understand that concept of being vulnerable with mm. um with my crones they had never had it and stuff but they wanted me to go in and yeah. like, pressurizing about that so um I, I made some new friends there as well so uh, and stuff but from there um i moved to a more one that does more work from home so I can do my work from home easily um, and not get the pressure to, to come in. And it is, it is hard still because the college don't have, they have air conditioning, but no windows to mm. open and stuff to no air ventilation or, or anything. So best I'll do my work from home. But at one point I want to say between special schools, there is always going to be a positive and a negative. Um, there's not always going to be, mm-hmm. um, I don't want, like people listening to think that it's it is good mainstream school is really good for like we all have our different experiences because some people do have autism and they do really well in, in mainstream so it's really hard but in my there's, a few, alone, there's a few of them that i've met mm-hmm. strange creatures yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like there, there was a situation um i got detention for uh, it's quite funny actually i laugh at it and I, I did laugh at it when I, when I had it and had a little conversation. Um, there was a science teacher there that was more of a mainstream teacher, but was there in a setting as a special, at the special school, taught science. And one lesson, I knew we wasn't going to use our pencil cases or anything, so on purpose I didn't bring it. <laughs> um, and we was on the computers the whole lesson. <laughs> and... The, science, the teacher said, uh, Mason, where is your... Um, we're sitting down. I'm on the computer, everything. <laughs> and she said, uh, you probably know. W- w- where's your pencil case and pen and, and stuff, Mason? I said, no, I don't have it. Um, I left it in class. <laughs> and she said, uh, you're supposed to bring it to every lesson. And I said, yeah, I know. But we're not using it. There's less than we're on computers. Um, <laughs> um, and she said, uh, you've got detention. And of right. course, being, of course, I went to it, and I said, I I went out the door. I said, I had a bit of an argument because I wasn't happy. Um, I want to get my point across, um, my point of view, saying I don't know why. This is a situation which I didn't like because mm. in that specific lesson, she gives a t- a, a person that um, a pen, a pen, a pencil, and I think that was a bit odd, a bit wrong, in fact, because. You're telling me I got detention when someone else forgot theirs, like the, the, the pencils or stuff, mm-hmm. and you're giving it to them. And I said that to her, um, and she 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 said, um, "Oh, you don't." I was not going to give you one anyway, so <laughs> I got my point across, which is mm-hmm. you have to do sometimes. That's that's um, that's that's really good though, because you had you had the confidence to to really approach it in a in a in a logical sort of matter of fact way. Do you think you would have been able to do the same if you were in a mainstream school? I think no, because no, I, I don't think I would have. Like there were some scary teachers in mainstream school. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like it's really aggressive as well, isn't it? Um, yeah. How they come across? It um, can be. Um, it feels like that. There shouldn't be like that. It should be like they should get in serious trouble for that stuff. I think if they speak to you that manner because you're a student and they're the teacher and they should treat you in a, a formal way. Um, I've, I've, I've heard of people who they've been um, 
locked in a cupboard before by by a teacher in a mainstream school. I th- I think you know one one thing to to draw back on is the the fact that you know you you've got to think I I had an experience for a year of being a special needs teach, teaching assistant. I was in, I was involved with helping out with classes that had both autistic and non-autistic people in. And I have to say it is very, very difficult. <laughs> like I would, I would love to say to you that, you know, me having my autistic lived experience, I would be able to just jump in there, work my magic, that everything will be hunky dory, but it's, it's not like that. And it's, you know, whilst my experiences have, have helped in a lot of circumstances, particularly when it's been quite, quite a difficult, um, quite difficult circumstances, I really struggled to maintain my sanity, my mental health, um, in that environment. Cause it's literally like having a school day all over again, but you're responsible for children at the same time and you need to teach them things and you need to organize yourself and like this being a teacher it's it's a very overlooked profession because it doesn't pay well for how much work that you have to put in really in a lot of circumstances i don't think i could fault the individual teachers on it you know if if it was built into the school if it was part of the lessons to learn about autism, part of teacher training to be aware of autism and being being able to teach autistic people who were who are more than likely going to be in somewhere in that school, then it it would be a lot better if we, if we had all of that. Um, and and you know maybe you could you could pull teachers up and say, you know you you didn't you you know you you didn't think about their needs in this situation, but it's the the governing part of the school that that is usually from from my experience the issue if it, if it stems from a place of understanding and awareness and 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 action and reasonable adjustments then it tends to be a lot better across the board and you 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 won't have any specific teacher that will you know just that nice human being who listens to you and makes adjustments you you don't need to try and find that that needle in the haystack you, they're already there they're around you so i i really did want to just you know bring people's attention to that cuz it's it is it is hard being a teacher and um you know it's a very stressful job and i can imagine that it's it's very hard on their psyches you know dealing with all the parents and <laughs> uh the the up above and the kids and the miss you know the yeah. kids make it difficult for you. It is it is very difficult. You know, I I would I would like, you know, for us to, to kind of shift our shift our focus from individual teachers to the the school system, basically. Yeah. It's, um, you can imagine the pressure. I'm not uh, saying I'm not saying that you'll you'll have you'll have teachers who aren't assholes and aren't idiots and. Um, can't take any personal responsibility for what they say. There's always going to be people like that, whether they're teachers or not. I certain. Like our teachers have, um, like parents' evening. If they have, they say the child, the, the parents' child hasn't been good. They're going to be thinking, wait, what? <laughs> Sometimes, mm. um, as a whole, I do think the education system it does has a long way to go, and there's lots of improvements that need to be made. Really. I think I think one of the main issues issues is that it's very very slyly akin to a prison. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Secondary that's a good school word. education, it's 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 or education in general. You are a prisoner, basically. Like yeah, being but, a soldier, isn't it? Yeah, like being a little soldier. Um, I believe that the the school system, you know, with all the bells and the the ties and the suits and stuff. The originally it was it was. It was molded around the idea of the perfect factory worker, um, which is, you know, some something in history. So it's it's worth like think, thinking back to where where the roots of this is. It's not about getting you a job that you want. It's about molding you into someone who's amenable 
and who will fulfill a role that that other people don't want to do kind of thing uh, yeah. but that's that's the the uh, the anarchist inside of me anarchist <laughs> speaking um but anyway i digress I one think, thing um... one thing that that really made an impact or, or really piqued my attention when you were speaking was that you said that you went to a mainstream college because you know i was i was going to ask you about the 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 negative aspects of of being in a in a special needs school you know like typically the things that i think of as being negatives or possible negatives could be some things around skills or perhaps um the the level of education that you get uh the, these are these are all just un, 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 unfactual things that that just have been made apparent to me from being in mainstream and teaching in, in special needs and talking to various people and talking to my mom, um, who's a big SEN lead, wonderful woman. I think I think the main things for me would be the skills, the level of education, perhaps some of the experiences that you you didn't have around very mainstream related things like and 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 sort of the main thing for me would be experience interacting with people who aren't autistic that are your age that are your peers you know it's not just for autistic people like there's different differences um in in people a uh, variety of different differences <laughs> amongst uh, people at special needs schools but what do you think about that do you think that do you feel like special needs education prepared you enough um, to interact with non-autistic people in your adult life? I think so. Yeah, because I didn't really know many autistic people hmm. till I was there. Like, you got know, people that have got autism, like me. Um, the whole different environment, because, like, mainstream, like I said, soldier, exactly that. Because I remember if head of year come in the class, you all have to stop what you're doing and it's it's like the Queen's Attention. coming or something. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Um Big Man and, coming through, everybody bow down. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. That's it. And do do as he says or pay the consequence. Uh, then that's what it was and and the special need environment is much better because you you can be free. There's sensory rams. There's soft play, which even at a, even near enough leaving, that's what I love doing. Like going to sensory rooms, going to soft play rooms. It's lovely. Um, and do you have those, those your, resources available? Yeah, you're going to meltdown. You can go out of the classroom, which was very understanding. I, yeah. I got, but one thing I didn't like was say I was going to the library. I was just sitting there. And, I need time out of class, so I'll get asked by certain teachers, oh, why am I here? Because like, the printer is in the library. Mm. So um, yeah, people yeah. go in there, collect stuff and mm-hmm. and things. And, I, like, when I had I was in the flat, I was um, – I still wanted to go in when I was in pain from my from my crimes, and teacher asked if I wanted to go sit in the library. And I said no because I know people's going to ask why I'm here, so I don't want that stress. Stress is a it's a trigger for me and like pain. Yeah. So so that would make it worse, and I didn't want that, and I didn't want to react bad to a person because mm. um, I probably would have, and I didn't want that, and yeah, I, I just don't like getting asked on on relevant questions, <laughs> really. Unnecessary social interaction. <laughs> yeah. Just, just well, do what you're doing. I'll do what I'm doing, and get on with our day. <laughs> I mean, I can I can definitely see uh, interactions. Oh, all, a lot of the things that I've experienced in secondary school, which were awful and traumatizing, were from other students. Although although it has impacted my mental health quite quite vastly, it did give me a, a, a sense of what it's like to deal with someone who is not good. Or someone who is is mean and horrible and selfish and well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say evil because evil is a strong word, but um, <laughs> committing evil acts upon thy themselves themselves. What we're we talking about thyself, myself. 
uh, up on me. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I built up a level of resilience to those types of people. I, I suppose, you know, my, my question is, is related to what, what I asked about communication and stuff. Do you, do you feel like you're able to cope with people who are unkind and, and nasty? I think I used to really take offense to people being unkind and nasty. Um, when I was younger and stuff, not accepting being, having autism, but, but now I think I don't, like, if someone says something bad to say about me, I will say, like, if they don't, if they're saying something bad about me as a whole or autism, Crohn's disease, I will I will say, um, if it's online, I'll block them, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, and I won't take offence. Like, now, I'll, I'll kind of say to him, if you don't like me, just... Don't say anything. Like, yeah. You don't have to say anything. Like just go on with your day, go on with mine. But I would, don't take much offence to that now. Mm. Like I think it's only sometimes you think it's not worth saying something back. No, no, of course, like, yeah. Although it can really get to you, like in the past, in on like videos, um, I've got some hate comments and and stuff. Nothing autism or related. It's more seen hobbies I do, I do different videos for a show I really like, um, Doctor Who and oh. I I I I in past because I just I, I reckon some character. I reckon some ears yeah. have been raised in the audience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doctor yeah. Who. Are they gonna yeah. talk about Doctor Who? Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe but, on another episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just just Sorry, kind of guys. relating that in just, just kind of relating that in to what we're talking about, like mm. with a few hateful comments and and taking it in and mm. when I first first got one like doing a video like that and I got really offended and, and stuff and, and people saying that you don't look like it like the actual character and the point was not to look like it or trying to make it your own yeah um, and that's another hobby of mine acting I, I love it and I love doing it and that's helped me in pandemic and, and lockdowns as well as a personal mm. podcast and yeah and then and now I like from that I just I blocked them and I sat there thinking I don't I don't know what to think about this like should I stop doing it and stuff and then then I think no nah, I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna stop just because one person yeah. like there's many people lots of other people that do like it and they've actually told me that and and mental health is key to that and and stuff so yeah to answer your question <laughs> sorry for the little ramble but no, no um, don't worry about it um to, 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 to ask you a question, um, no, I don't mm. get as offended as I used to be, but um, I think every once in a while we can, but it's trying to learn that. It's all that taking things seriously and not, isn't it? It's going back to that sarcasm thing. Yeah. I um, I, I agree with you. I think in a, in most cases in, in your adult life, perhaps, you have you have more of a level of control over who you interact with, you're not just kind of putting this, put in this big melting pot of students and teachers that you you have to get on with or you you have to deal with. Whereas you know, in adult life, you can pick and choose who you want to be friends with. You can pick and choose who you want on your social media. You can you can do all of those things to you know be- better suit surround yourself with people that you want to be around. I find some difficulty with the crossover from school to the workplace because it's it's a very similar situation because you have a group of people in a melting pot and some people you have to talk to more than others and it's not always people that you want to talk to and that that really get you and what you work well with and and so it's not like you can just say, all right, take a hike. I'm not talking to you. You have to <laughs> if you want to stay stay in work. Or, or if they're really bad to you, you have to file a complaint and you have to go for all that kind of horrible HR stuff. You know, for me, it going back into into the workplace was kind of like going back to school in a, in a sense. And, 
you know, you can see that in the statistics because although perhaps uh, someone who's more akin to Asperger's, more more ASD one, you know, most people are a, a average or above average intelligence for the most of it. Tend to have a lot of really great skills, a lot of interests, and um, a diverse range of ideas and, and creativity and, and and things of that nature. But they don't get jobs. They're not employed. There's a very small percentage of us who are employed. You know, it's it stands to sort of as a something that follows on from something. I've got a word block. I was going to say predecessor, but the opposite of predecessor, whatever that is, um, the follow on, shall we say, of school, um, with all the bullying, all the the difficulties, all the the inter- forced interactions that you have to have. You know, even even myself going going to a mainstream school and and being in higher education, I found that really difficult to start with. And that you know, this is this is bearing in mind that I've I've dealt with people that I find hard to deal with for most of my life. I've been around people that I don't want to be around, in particular. So the, there is there is that difficulty around around workplaces because it's not as if you can personalize who who you're around. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I'm I'm very happy that you you brought that up about the workplace because. It is um it's very important because like many people with autism find it hard and, and in general it is hard to get work, isn't it? Yeah. Like to find a job and disregarding I, all the interviews and yeah, all that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, like I um I went to a workplace um for experience before the pandemic and I was there a while I'd say. Um and that was work experience on from my special school college I went on and then to the mainstream one as well. Kind of went on from it, started again. And none of them there had any idea of what autism is. Jesus. Um, and I had to educate them. I had to tell them what it is. I had to tell them my story saying that Good on you. it's not it's not the um, not the same, is it, than me? Mine's mm-hmm. not going to be the same as you. Yeah. So, um we have similarities, like as we've discussed today already, we have some similarities in experience of different things that has happened. Um, but the, what the good thing is that they changed how, the way they do things now. At mm. this, um, there is the there is some change, isn't there? There is. Yeah. It's very slow, but it's it's gradual, you know. Yeah, yeah. And at first, it was. It is a. It, it's not the like. It's not it, what what it was. It was a meat factory. Um, where I would go and it's not my ideal job, but I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, I was happy to help. Um, I was happy to go there and help them out. And like they've changed things now. They were happily want me back, but because of COVID, I had to stop and not go there and stuff and, and everything. And uh, very cold, very cold. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, but yeah, um, they've. I think they've got now that uh, smaller environments now that you can go. Um, and the highlight was uh, I, got, I think I got a discount on the turkey each Christmas. <laughs> 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 because, it's the little things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and what a um, discount they should have given you yeah. the turkey. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I want I, probably because I wasn't there full time. I think you had to be there full time. Like I, I did get you paid. You weren't eligible for no. the complimentary turkey. No, <laughs> no, I got, I got, um. I had this little fob. I think yep. I still have it. Like you yeah. fob it in and out. Like they paid me because they really liked me, um, and that was a monthly payment. So uh, it's one of the things I miss, I suppose, <laughs> not getting paid and with mm. that going there and stuff. Um, but it was a nice experience, and I, if I was want something extra, they would always be happy with me being there and stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, the turkey um, Christmas turkey was was nice and all, but. Wouldn't have been nice just to have it for free, completely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know, I d- I do think that it's you know it's it's worth worth thinking about for anyone listening to us uh, ramble to each other. Um, <laughs> it's worth thinking about because 
you know, I, I would I would say that some exposure to, to the neurotypical landscape is important. Just as my 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 opinion. I do think that even if it's just that you, you join a sports club or you join a gaming club that's not just people from special needs schools. It's a whole host of different people from different backgrounds and neurotypes and whatever. I, f- I feel like that, for me, would be a better model than just stick me in mainstream school um, so that I can learn to get on with non-autistic people because it's not that productive as a concept. Um, just stick someone in, they'll adapt, they'll change. Um, it's not like that. People People get excluded. People have really difficult times. People pick up mental health. They get traumatized by experience in mainstream schools. And I do, I do think that, you know, having that more sort of balanced approach, um, being an environment that's better, better suited and fit and molded around you is, is obviously going to be better. I think that, you know, where the, the, the mystery is, is, you know, is it going to, in what, in what specific ways is that going to impact you in adult life, getting a job, mostly being, being the key bit. And it's, it's different. Each each area of every area of work is different, and obviously there'll be there'll be different standards and different requirements, and you know maybe some jobs you don't even need to talk to anybody, you just get on with it and they pay you to do it. But you know just to kind of move it on and sort of round things up, I'm going to end up with a little bit of a, a roundup question: Is mainstream or SEN education better for autistic students? Um. I think <laughs> this is your opinion. This is your opinion. Yeah. I'm not asking yeah. you for the gospel. Right. <laughs> my uh, my opinion. I am um, in my experience that I think a special school environment is a very much better place for mm-hmm. people with autism. But just to say that, like we've touched on before, it's not just going to be people there who have autism. Yeah. It's going to be all, all, all different things. Um, and I just want to ask you, um, do you, like because there's labels, isn't there? With autism, mm, like yeah. high functioning, low functioning. Yes, I, yeah. I just wanted to ask you, like, your opinion on that. Like, like, what's your thoughts on on those labels? <laughs> oh, you you're plunging me into deep water, Mason. Um, I am very happy to to answer that. Um, I'd recommend anybody who doesn't want to hear my answer to that that they fast forward about five minutes, probably. I think, to some degree. Functioning labels are important in a educational and healthcare setting. It's not, I, I don't think it's good to describe someone as being low or high functioning. Uh, just as it, just as I recoil from the, the word disability, cause it's, 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 it's all about deficit and, you know, in general, giving someone a deficit or calling someone by a deficit is not good. I say that the the choice to merge all of the the sub subcategories of autism into one big diagnosis was a bad idea, because now we don't have those distinguishing terms, and it can, it can be very complex for people who aren't inundated with hundreds of testimonials for autistic people and not being in the aut- the autism world, the autism community. Someone someone saying. Okay, Elon Musk is autistic, right? Well, I thought I thought autistic people were supposed to be in care. Could you explain that for me? Like, how how are you supposed to accurately explain what you mean by that? It's a it's a very difficult question, and I think most people would say no. I I can't answer that because yeah, of course it's, it's um fun. it's it's a bit taboo of a of a topic to 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 talk yeah. about. Um, it's an important thing to talk about because we, we can all see it. We, we all know. We all know that one person, perhaps ASD one Asperger's diagnosis, they're going to be dramatically different in their ability to to live life independently from someone who's in full time care and and have been since since they were young, and they they don't have a job and you know they don't, they don't have that independence over their life as much because they need the the care and support so it's you know it's it's a bit of a touchy touchy area because 
the is kind of the the central question that kind of makes it difficult to conceptualize what we mean by autism what we mean by neurodiversity you know at what point do we say all right okay <laughs> it's it is not benefiting this person in in any other way other than perhaps one key area that they're good at do we consider that to be not neurodiversity or or a disability or and then and then of course on the disability front i would i would say that if you say that you you don't want to be called disabled or you you do want to be called disabled there's always going to be someone who's like right well you you struggle in those areas so you're disabled right yes you know of course they struggle in those areas but equally there's a lot of positives <laughs> Um, from that and a lot of the things that I'm not so good at inherently I can work on and I can build on on the flip side don't call people disabled because disab disability is not a bad thing you know I'd say that there's there is nothing wrong with being disabled it's not a it's not something that defines you as a human being it's you know it's it's literally by definition something that you can't do it's it's an explanation for why you can't do certain things um yeah and that's what that's why i have an aversion to it used as a label for somebody because it's it's all negative it's 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 just a negative term that we use um we have a lot of we have a lot of conversations about language and the best way to to talk and i you know person first um identity first language that kind of thing but the thing the thing is that, that autism is not a negative term by 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 our understanding perhaps in the the books it's a neurodevelopmental condition um medically not particularly always just disabling like it's not as clear cut as that and so that that's where those clarifying questions of are they high functioning are they low functioning come in because people need to clarify what exactly they're speaking about it's a very difficult conversation and a difficult topic and it's very interesting which is why i, I think about it a lot but i hope that's answered your question <laughs> yeah yeah it, it does like it's only quite recently actually i, th I think more about this hmm. because like i think you're quite right I, I agree because it's very important in an education setting hmm. um and like a healthcare setting and yeah like once that stage is left um and the term like i think the, the, the other time you said it's I, I very much agree and it it is like a topic like i've discovered in other countries that they just call it autism they don't do high function and low function they just mm. don't do labels which i think is a good it is a good way but there's always going to be whatever opinion you have there's going to be a good things and bad things about each so it is very interesting i think and i think sorry i've t I've talked loads and now i'm interrupting you no um, no don't no worry like <laughs> I, 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 I was just gonna say like go back to the workplace that with eye, eye contact is a big thing that they require you mm, to do eye contact and then if you do eye contact yeah. you may not get the job and i think that that's silly i think well there is there is some some biological psychological basis for that because they've done studies on it and it tends to be the people who don't make eye contact get interpreted to be less social less open less wanting to talk less trustful and that that's not that's not something that that someone has gone and said to people that you know they, they haven't asked someone what do you think of people who don't make eye contact it's you know it's it's a scientific study so they remove those variables and that that's what people think about it and i th i think you know i can't blame people for for working the way that we've worked uh blame them for the the psychology and the biology that they have but i i definitely encourage people to kind of learn about autism and just think okay maybe i can get rid of that bias a little bit and and listen to someone as as they are and what they can do and that kind of thing well i'm i would love to talk to you a long long much much more time um 
can tell that it's the end of the podcast. Struggle with the rounding up. That's the that's the, always the issue. <laughs> I would love to talk to you more, uh, but we do need to somewhat stick to time. I asked my Instagram peoples uh, what questions they want to ask. And so far, I have received zero replies, which is grand. Um, I should have been a bit more on it. Um, this is preceding lots of questions about changing my Instagram handle from Asperger's growth to something else. So that may have had an impact on that. But I guess I'll go, I'll go on to um, Quora. And see if I can find some some good questions. So, looking at some of the the common questions, one of one of the key ones there is how do you cope with ASD at a mainstream school? Um, that, that's a very good question because it's hard to cope at a, a mainstream school. Um, what you look, the only thing you look forward to is going home. Um, mm. In my experience, <laughs> yeah, you um, can second that. But to cope, you're trying to find um, like it's a very hard it's a, it's very hard to cope in a mainstream school. If if you, you could give yourself can't. your um yourself uh, some some pointers or some lessons or some some advice for your younger self, what kind of thing would you tell them? I, I'll probably say um, like if you're gonna. Uh, you've got to try and get through the day because uh, mm. it's hard like always fearing like it's locker locker's like always fearing like where that is um, mm. so I'm going to get in it and get stuff because I, I even at special schools I was never trustworthy of a locker <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going in there you always have that one person yeah. that, uh, and stuff so yeah I think some point as I would say it's just um, it's hard to say be positive because you're not. It's it's always negative and depressed. No. I in that experience, um, maybe go to a teacher that you you like if you do, um, because there was there was one at least one that was okay. Yeah. Um, but sometimes there's not. It's quite rare. But if you have someone or or give your parents a call or mm. or someone that you can mm. um like help you get through that day because it's very hard because if you're late it's even stressful like it's, it's hard because in mainstream school you go to teachers that you don't know that well sometimes you don't always have the same one um it's a bigger environment which is more stressful yeah because if you're organized or if you if you're organized even if you're organized person um, it's stressful because you've, if I can, if I've got everything, if I've missed something, and and the workload especially puts on that stress because yeah. you're thinking about you have got to um, complete this in time, or you're given one day to complete it, and that's why it's less stressful with the workload hmm. at a special school, in my opinion, because you, I was rarely given anything. It was once every while, which is great. So. That's the difference, and even asking my parents to do it for me because I don't really know what to do mm-hmm. um, with the work and in mainstream. So, yeah, well, the advice is just try find st- things that you can do to try and get through that day. If it's you fine, just want to be on your coping own strategies, yeah, just I would yeah. I would definitely second the talk talk to the teachers that you feel comfortable with because you know a lot a lot of the time it's it's good to have a teacher on your side when you when you're fighting for something and if you feel comfortable confi- confiding in them and things that you find difficult it's more likely to be pushed up as a as an issue and resolved um than not and also as painful as it is your parents <laughs> i i realize that everyone's got different familial relationships you know some of them might not be so great but if you if you have parents that you you know that, that are on your side and that will do do what you you need to do then that is a good a good way to go about it as as awful as it feels 
being a teenager, asking your parents for help. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I definitely should have made use of that a lot more when I was younger. I think I, I'd also say just, just be easy on yourself. The, the whole likelihood is, is that you're not going to flourish in that environment. Some people do, some people don't, but you can always make use of it and you can always adapt things. And if things are hard, you can, you can change it. You know, if, if you're having trouble at lunchtime break, maybe it's a good idea to go somewhere where the, the bullies aren't or go somewhere that's near a teacher, like a library or, or something like that. And uh, try try and make friends through through clubs and sort of out, outside sources. That's what I would say. I think the ne- the next one that is quite is quite popular, which is why do you think people who are autistic should be integrated into mainstream classrooms? Do you think that that's a good idea? You perhaps have a a, a mainstream school with a special needs division like an area of the school that's special needs. Do you, do you integrate those people? Um, I think there's lots of good things and bad things because like, they feel like they're the odd ones out possibly. Yeah. Or you feel like you're, you're the odd ones out from everyone else because you're in a, in a classroom that being a younger, my, yeah. my younger self thinking that I'm in a more, like not dumber or uh, it's not, it shouldn't think that way, but, you do and like kind of, paint, kind of paints from. like a, a target on your back yeah um, like i'm i need more help it kind of shows that yeah. where which makes sense but it might be a smaller classroom as well but um yeah it's hard because i always had the extra support at schools and and everything so I, that's special i i i, I liked i mean, doing it in my own time sometimes yeah I, um later on in school I did after help more which it was always a struggle for after help um yeah. which got more got more confident at that stage brilliant I would say that it is entirely individual and I don't think you should force all of them to to be integrated into the classroom and the the, ma- the mainstream setting both lunchtime break and during lessons if it's not good for them and they they don't get on in that environment. I I would give them the option, and I would encourage them and support them to be involved in that environment if they want to, and if they can tolerate it, and it's it's good for them. You now maybe it could be spend lunch times, break times in the special needs division. Probably more likely if if we have like sensory soft play rooms and sensory rooms and stimming stations, that kind of thing. But yeah, I think I think it's a very individual thing, and it, it shouldn't be a policy that everybody mixes in with everybody. It should be very individualistic. So that's the the two questions that oh have magically appeared on my Instagram. Uh, <laughs> not really, not yet. It, it, it might get a bit of traction when more, when more people you know, know about happened? it. <laughs> like later so later on, there'll be loads of questions. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that's that's the end of our little Q and A. What I want to ask you is, you know, is in in a brief words as possible. What are the the key things that you want people to take away, uh, or key messages, key learning learning things, anything like that? What I want the people listening to take from this talk is that um, although my experience in a special school or mainstream school was like how how I've said it is it it's not going to be like that for everyone like it all depends on the teachers all depends on the school all depends on the setting and the environment but um for me I I, I flourished once I joined got used to special school and yeah so I don't think if I was that mainstream I'm not sure um if I'd be as confident as I am today so I kind of I kind of say thanks to the people and to everyone involved that helped make that happen because if I didn't have in my life for support it's for people, people there to do that and pushing, I probably won't be here <laughs> talking to you today. So, <laughs> um, Thank you, Mason. Um, just be yourself, guys, and um, be be uh, inspiring and 
keep doing what you're doing because um, I always say on um, when we do a podcast, you never know who you're helping. Indeed. Thank you for that, Mason. Brilliant. So we have a uh, a new section to the podcast, which is a very um, new thing, obviously fresh out of the out of the bucket. S- season two special. <laughs> so I asked you to find me a song, um, a song that is either related to the topic or related to yourself, or a song that you just really love. I want to ask you what that song is, who is it by, and why have you chosen it? Um, my song is Grace Caddy by uh, Mika. And the reason I choose this song is because in the song, like, like we talked about the little things before, um, in the song it mentions Mr. Smith. Um, it, if you haven't listened to the song, it mentions that name. And Mr. Smith is the teach, is the head teacher of um, the special school I went to and like kind of changed my life really joining there and how understanding he was and, and everything to allow me to come in um so that was the main reason i choose the song and it's definitely related to the topic because um of the special school him called mr smith right it relates all, all yeah, that so yeah i do I like, like the song that. as well though <laughs> it's a really good song good. um um and big shout out to to mr smith as well <laughs> <laughs> I um I will definitely listen to that after our episode and I you know music is a really big thing for me um it's a really great tool for self expression for for coping with mental health for helping other people understand when words can't really do the whole justice um so I definitely recommend you listen to Mason's song I will I will definitely be listening to it I also want to mention that Another another segment is that we are doing profile of the day, uh, highlighting people who are, you know, making really good work out there and um, deserve a bit more credibility and deserve a few more follows. Today's profile of the day is actually Aspling, which is a creator uh, that I know called Vicky, and she made she's been making really good content for a long time now. Uh, she's actually been on the podcast as well to talk about autism and puberty and um really great person sadly got locked out of her account so she had to start from scratch again so i will put her profile down in the description for you to take a look but i would definitely recommend um going and following her and seeing what she's about i think that's pretty much everything and um thank you very much mason for coming on if you want to find the 40 Audio podcast, it is available on uh, Anchor. It's available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. If you want to find it at any of your podcasting sites, I definitely redirect you to my social media on Instagram. I do a lot of blogs, a lot of work over on Instagram. My website, thomashenley.co.uk. Um, all, all of my social medias are at Asperger's Growth. Uh, but it may be that I'm I'm changing my name as as we've discussed um, today to something else. So I will always update it in the the, the description if you want to go find that stuff. And um, yeah, f- thank you all to all of my YouTube members who have um, you know joined joined, and all of my subscribers, all the people who follow me, and of course my Patreon donors, in particular Mr. Patrick Vetti for always supporting me monetarily, emotionally, all that kind of stuff. Amazing, amazing man um, who's, who's done a lot for keeping the podcast going and keeping my work going. So yeah, if if I haven't accidentally skipped over anything, I think that is all I have to say. Have you enjoyed your experience, Mason, on the 40 Oti podcast? Yeah, I've, I've really loved it. Um, and... Yeah, I think it's been a really good experience. Um, I like that you mentioned Diet Profile today as well because I, I think that's a really good addition mm-hmm. um, to it because, um, yeah, like Vicky's a very passionate person in the autism community. She is. Um, and she actually she came on my podcast as well um, last year. So, yeah, um, it's been a pleasure to get to know a person like Vicky, how passionate she is for, for autism. And 
the awareness she brings to the community because, yeah, like she did get locked out of her account, um, which was a bit gutting because we never liked that, do we? Like, mm. like much work you put in to your social media and your advocating work. She does it's a lot not, of work in the in yeah. the scientific community as well. I think she's, um, I believe she's doing a doctorate in psychology, and she's she's doing a lot of stuff around female diagnostic criteria so she's very good she's contributing on many many fronts but i i'm very glad to hear that you've you've enjoyed your time i very much enjoyed my time um and thank you for putting up with all of my communication difficulties finding my feet again and uh yeah uh, i hope you have a good day mason and i i hope to you all i hope to you that you are having a good day and you're hydrating yourself you're keeping clean, you're engorging yourself in mass amounts of your special interests and um, you're getting on all right and you're treating yourself kind. It's been, it's been really fun to talk about really good topics um, or important topics to talk about. And yeah, we uh, we hope things do improve. Um, but yeah, like last thing for me, I'll thank you and I hope everyone enjoyed um, hearing about a few of my experiences as well as uh, relating it and the differences between mainstream school and special school. Awesome. Thank you for that roundup, Mason. And with that, I bid you adieu. See you later, guys. You can say bye as well. I always forget to say that. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys and uh, enjoy the, the next episode on, on the podcast. <laughs> Brilliant.